starting off with the European Union is due to ban imports of Iranian oil, a move the Islamic Republic has warned might lead to a block of major shipping corridor. EU foreign ministers must decide today in Brussels when the embargo should start balancing their wish to act fast to pressure Iran to stop its nuclear program against the need to give some member states time to find alternative oil sources. They may also target Iran's central bank. Iran's Vice President Mohammad Reza Rahimi said on December 27 that his nation may close the Straits of Hormuz, the Persian Gulf passageway for about 20 percent of globally traded oil if the EU and the U.S. impose stricter sanctions. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar and Kuwait also ship crude and liquefied natural gas through the strait. The U.S. and Europe have raised pressure on Iran this month after the International Atomic Energy Agency, the United Nations Atomic Watchdog, said Iran had started enriching uranium up to 20 percent at a fortified site. President Barack Obama signed a bill on December 31st that tightens sanctions on Iran by denying access to the U.S. financial system to any foreign bank that conducts business with the central bank of Iran. The U.S. and EU say Iran's nuclear development plans are aimed at building atomic weapons. The Islamic Republic, the second largest oil producer in the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, after Saudi Arabia, is already under four rounds of UN sanctions and says its nuclear program is for energy and medical purposes, not weaponry. An EU ban would apply to imports of Iranian oil, purchases out of Iran by EU companies to non-EU countries, transport of oil from Iran, as well as finance and insurance of oil contracts, according to an EU diplomat who declined to be identified because the talks are confidential. The embargo requires unanimity among the bloc's 27 states. French President Nicolas Sarkozy said the EU must target both Iran's oil and its central bank. EU governments reached a preliminary accord last week for measures against Iran's central bank, offering to allow ops out on case-by-case -case basis to protect European trade with entities not covered by sanctions, according to an EU diplomat. Ministers are likely to approve the agreement, the diplomat said. The oil embargo will probably take effect in about six months, other EU diplomats with knowledge of this talks said. The EU imported 14.5 billion euros of goods from Iran, 90 percent of which was oil and related products. In 2010, and exported goods to the country worth 11.3 billion euros, the EU said in a January 20 statement. Ten commercial banks last year saw impressive growth, but this year's outlooks are comparatively diminishing due to the likely hike in the deposit insurance premium. The 10 commercial banks' growths range from 20.96 percent to 106.81 billion baht. Bank loans are expected to continue to expand this quarter, but past that the trend is uncertain. Banks are being called on to help pay off the debt of the Financial Institutions Development Fund, or the FIDF, through a higher level on their deposit base. Except for Tanishad Bank, whose net profit dropped by 11.3 percent to 5 billion baht due to huge merger expenses, all banks showed improved results. Sayam Commercial Bank, or the SCB, reported the highest annual net profit of 36.27 billion baht among 11 banks. Bank of Bank, the largest by assets, reported an increase of 11.2 percent in net profit to 27.34 billion baht. Grung Thai Bank logged a net profit increase of 14.08 percent to 17.01 billion baht, helped by a 27 percent surge in net interest income to 50.38 billion baht and a 10 percent rise in fee income to 11.37 billion baht. Earnings growth at Bank of Ayutthaya would have been higher than the 5.5 percent that it reported had it not taken a 12.4 billion baht deferred tax provision in the fourth quarter. 
An analyst at Asia Plus Securities said last week that the financial results for only the fourth quarter of 2011 were below its expectations due to the adjustment of deferred tax liabilities and for a net interest margin due to the floods. Tisco Financial Group reported an increase in earnings of 13.10 percent to 3.26 billion baht for all of last year. However, for the fourth quarter, earnings edged down 1 percent year-on-year and 25 percent quarter-on-quarter due to a 127 million baht deferred tax provision in the quarter. An Asia Plus analyst predicts that the banking industry this quarter could enjoy a revival in corporate loans as companies invest in recovery from the floods. Retail loans could follow next quarter. However, it is unclear whether spreads will be better next quarter. Analysts said that the higher cost of funds from the hike in the deposit protection agency fee, bank earnings are now at risk. So it's all about banks this afternoon. The Bank of America Merrill Lynch, or BAML, sees risk in the Thai currency and capital controls if the Bank of Thailand is assigned to take a total responsibility for the 1.14 trillion baht debt legacy incurred during bank bailouts in 1997. Ashok Bundia, a strategist for Asia-Pacific Foreign Exchange and Currencies at BAML said the issue is of concern. He noted in the next five years, the bot could underperform other regional currencies if the BOT has to be responsible for the Financial Institution Development Fund or FIDF debt. According to Ashok, structurally, Asian currencies are expected to appreciate in the long term with short-term caution on volatility tracking from the West. BAML expects the baht to weaken to 32 to 32.50 baht per U.S. dollar by the end of March and 30.8 by the year end. The FIDF issue is not included in these estimates. If the BOT is required only to service the FIDF debt, it would likely be less negative for the bot, as Shock said. But if it has to pay the principal and roll over the debt that is due this year, that will hurt the currency. However, the draft executive decree, which is currently pending royal endorsement, has not been disclosed yet. He said the language in the emergency decree will determine the BOT's commitment to the legacy debt. Given the likelihood of capital inflows to Asia, he noted that there could be an increase in risk for capital controls in Thailand, which could affect foreign investors. Capital control measures are commonly designed to manage and limit foreign capital coming into the country and prevent currency appreciation. With the European and U.S. economic problems, foreign capital is expected to flow into Asia this year, where economic fundamentals are stronger than in the West. Quantitative easing is expected in the European Union in the first half of this year, and the third round of QE is likely in the United States. Around the second half, said Victoria Ip, Managing Director for the Merrill Lynch Asia-Pacific. Such an increase in money supply could lead to capital seeking higher return assets outside the United States, where growth is fragile and interest rates are low, and the EU, which seems to set to enter a recession this year. Given the European debt crisis and anticipated recession, IP expects the 2012 to see a backdrop of slow growth and a soft landing in Asia. ASEAN central banks and governments have room to respond aggressively via both monetary and fiscal policies if the downturn worsens. Ashok said, however, in Thailand there is uncertainty over where the BOT's policy rate will go. To talk to us on the Bank of Thailand's policy rate and also other related uh, issues, yes. we have with us on the line Kun Tirachai Puwana Naranuban, who is the former finance minister. Swadika Kun Tirachai. Uh, Swadi Khan. Now, this uh, coming Wednesday, the Monetary Policy Committee is expected to convene for the first time this year. And also, uh, in the past several weeks, there's been um, expectations and sentiments that that the policy rate should be uh, reduced by 25 basis points. Kuntira Chai, what is your opinion on this matter? Well, um, a monetary policy is 
uh, you know, the responsibility of the central bank. Uh, uh, and, you know, they work as a committee, so it is not easy to predict, you know, their, their, their opinion. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, they, uh, it is possible for them to reduce uh, the um, policy rate by perhaps uh, a, a quarter of 1%. Uh, because the economy had slowed down substantially as a result of the big flood. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, Kuntiri, so now that you're out of the picture of the finance portfolio, can you share some opinions on how the FIDF debt should be managed? Well, uh, I think the proposal, you know, to have uh, the banking system uh, yes. bear the burden uh, uh, in uh, resolving the problem, you know, of past mistake is still uh, the, the correct way to do, mm. uh, you know, and uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the draft, you know, of the emergency decree uh, has, you know, uh, uh, laid the, the burden uh, squarely on the shoulders of the of the commercial bank. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, what I oppose, uh, you know, was the was the attempt to try to to pass this liability onto the central bank, uh, and uh, uh, you know, which would uh, have violated. The principle of, uh, uh, of of proper economics and and uh, financial discipline. Yes. Yeah, so, so what uh, negative impacts would that have? Uh, the the impact uh, I have I have to admit that it may uh, you know cause uh, the the profits of the bank to 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 be uh, a little bit lower, mm -hmm. and the banks may uh, if you know if uh, if if not careful they may try to pass on the burden some of this burden to the customers. So okay. it will be up to the central bank you know to negotiate. With the commercial banks and set the rates of levy uh, to be reasonable, uh, such that the banks can absorb this by themselves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Kuntira Shai, uh, within four to five uh, years, the government is expected to create more public debt from 40% to 60%. Now, from your experience, is this a concern? Well, um, you know, um, increasing public debt in Thailand uh, is, is, is possible because the, the current level of public debt is still low. Yes. Uh, as long as the money is used for productive purposes, as long as, you know, it uh, helps uh, the country uh, to have a, a, lo a long-term uh, sustainable uh, uh, increase in income. Uh, the, the, uh, the key to this is that, you know, uh, we have to be straightforward about it. Mm. I, I'm, I'm totally against the idea, you know, of trying to artificially lower uh, the level of public debt, uh, the lower, uh, you know, the, uh, just just by uh, accounting uh, maneuver or just by uh, transferring some of the shares in the state enterprises. Right. Uh, the debt is still there. Yeah, that, that, are, that are related to the government. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is likely to be the way out, in your opinion? Well, uh, the way out, in my opinion, is just to be straightforward. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if we need to borrow, uh, just show the higher debt figure, uh, and uh, you know, over the long run, uh, once the public, uh, you know, becomes more strong in in, in their uh, in their in their welfare, then start to collect uh, more tax and and, uh, and and put on the program to repay the debt. Just just be straightforward about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Just show the real number. That's that. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kuntir Shai, thank for your you share so today. Thank you so much, Kuntir Shai, and happy Chinese New Year to you. Happy thank Chinese you very New much. Year. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.